Hi, my name is Jamie and welcome to my cross stitching channel. Today is Sunday, March 13th, and this is floss tube number eight. Eight is what I said there. Sorry, voice cracked a little bit. Um, so welcome to anybody who is new and welcome back to anybody who's visiting me, visiting me again. Uh, so today I have kind of a lot to go through. Um, most likely I'll end up talking really fast and it won't seem that long, but so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, so last time in my video, I did a drawing, uh, I reached 500 subscribers and so we did a giveaway. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do those results really quick. So I pulled up the comment picker. I hope this works right. Never used it before, so we'll see. Okay, so the first thing that I was giving away was this paper chart, which was a heaven and earth design by Donna Gelsinger called Gardener's Paradise. And I asked people to use the word paradise if they wanted to be entered for this one. So that was the first one I'm giving away. And I wanted to mention, I thought it went without saying, but just in case anybody who entered for that, I have not marked it up. I never, I opened it up one time to look at the pages. I've never marked them or anything, so it's in pristine condition. So if you, any of you were worried about that, but. Okay, so the first one is for paradise and it looks like there were 15 comments that used that word. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and start. Alright, so it looks like a person named Jamie, J-M-E, that's a cute kitty picture. I just love the gardener's paradise being a gardener myself. I also love heaven and earth designs. I have eight pages of wish list. I love your video game sampler so much. Thank you and congratulations. I'm so excited. I'm glad that you're like a gardener and it works for you. So great. Awesome. Okay, so that's for the first one. And I'm going to write that down really quick. <laughs> because I know I will forget it. Okay. All right, so there's for the first one. And then, sorry while I fix this here. So the second giveaway was just for a PDF pattern of a heaven and earth design, whatever you wanted to pick. And I had a lot of entries for this. Uh, there were 57 comments this time. Okay, there we go. All right, sorry, <laughs> it wasn't resetting. Okay, so we had 57 comments for Earth. And the winner of this one is... Yvonne Vigil. Oh, and this was someone who actually <laughs> said that the, my audio needed to be fixed, and I did, and they said it was better the next time. So she just started her first hate, which is Portrait of Father Christmas. Awesome. Okay, so that's the second winner, congratulations. Um, so to both of the winners, I will go back to my last video and comment on your comment um, for the paper chart. Um, I'll leave my email in the description box below so you can email me your address and I will send that out hopefully sometime this week. It will be this week, I just don't know exactly what day, probably Tuesday, um, but yeah, send me your address and I will Go ahead and mail that out and then Yvonne I will comment on yours as well and then you can either give me your information to go to your wish list if you have one on heaven earth designs and I'll just pick whichever one off of there you want or I can order it and then send it to you either way is fine so yay that was exciting <laughs> I didn't expect so many people to enter so that was fun all right so that was the giveaway uh, so I actually had a subscriber, Gwen, uh, she commented on my video and also sent me an email. Um, for anybody who wanted to ask me a question, wants to comment or just have a conversation with me, feel free to email me. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun to get emails. So, um, but she commented on my last video and also sent me an email asking me a couple of questions. And so I thought I would address them in my next video. So the first question she asked is she noticed that I use both tent stitch and full crosses on some of my projects and she asked how do I decide which one I'm using. Uh, so originally when I started back into cross stitching, I thought that full cross was like 
end all be all, you don't do anything else besides that. Uh, so I was doing everything as full crosses. And then as I started going on to like Facebook and Instagram and things, I saw people using a tent stitch. And um, I've seen a couple other ones like, oh shoot, the name's escaping me right now. But I've seen a couple different methods that people use to stitch their projects. And I wanted to try tent stitch because as anybody who's watched me for a little while knows, I have a ton of full coverage and I would like to finish them at some point. <laughs> So um, the speed of tent stitching was really appealing to me. Um, so I decided to give it a try on some of my pieces. Um, so the pattern never, it, it always calls for full cross, but uh, I just decided on a full coverage piece that's gonna take me a long time, I would go with tent stitching so that it would go a little bit faster. Um, and also I really like using the loop start. Um, so that's when you take one strand, you fold it in half, and then uh, when you go down the first hole and then come up the second, you grab the loop and it makes a knot, and that's how you start. So there's a bunch of YouTube videos on it, if that didn't make sense, um, that can show you. But so between wanting to go faster and using the loop start, I decided to switch over to tent stitching for all of my full coverage pieces. Um, so full cross pieces, I usually only use those for, so I use those on my samplers uh, because with samplers, with each of the motifs where like the image isn't all together, like in a full coverage, I feel like it would be really noticeable to use a tent stitch. So I use full crosses on all of my samplers. Um, and also, so for pandemic specifically too, I use the full cross because it's, um, it's such a small count and I worry about the threads being lost underneath the, and I, I like complete each cross as I go just to keep it from, from the, keep the floss from sliding under the, the fabric threads and all of that. So that's how I, I've kind of evolved. I used to do full cross on everything, but yeah, with figuring out that there's other ways to do it, I decided to switch. So that's my method. It wasn't anything like this is better or worse and you know if anybody wants to do full cross on everything that's great you do you like I have no issue with that whatever everybody seems to find their own way that works for them so full coverage with 10 stitch works for me and I use 28 or 25 counts so the coverage is still pretty good so that was the first question she asked and then the second was about the gridded fabric I use um so I have two different kinds of fabric that have grids there's the gray grids that are easy count, and those are grids of 10 by 10. And then the red grids are DMC fabric, and those are 20 by 20. Um, as someone who learned without the grids, I don't necessarily need them. And I find myself, I recount and count and count and count to make sure I'm in the right spot. So I don't really need them, but where I've kind of been doing more cross country, like in pages and things like that. It's actually come in quite handy um, to help with the counting, just to make sure I'm in the right spot um, and stay on track with the pattern so I don't have to frog anything. Um, so that's been helpful. Um, and I've also noticed, so that, that was more of like an advantage for me was that like jumping farther across uh, a piece of fabric was easier because I have frames of reference with the grids. Um, but disadvantages, she was asking what would be advantage and disadvantage. So the disadvantages are that you have to wash your piece at the end to get the lines to come out. Um, and I meant to say that the gray grids are woven in, the red grids are stamped on. So either way though, you have to wash them out at the end to make sure that you can't see them behind the stitches. Um, and then on the gray grids, so you have to decide whether to start on the gray line or inside the gray line and then go, cause the line only includes one side of the 10 by 10. So if you like started on the gray corner where the gray lines meet, then your 10th stitch would be right before the next gray line. So you have to remember whether you started on the gray line or inside it um just to make sure that you don't count wrong away from there so that's a little bit confusing 
if you're using the easy count and then but for the red stamped on ones um i'll actually show you so for like these red ones there's actually an inside line and another line so if you can see there's two red lines together so it includes the whole 20 by 20 and so you don't have to worry about where you are if you're counting away because there will always be a red line on each side of the square. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> I was just babbling away there. But um, so there's pros and cons to using it. A lot of people like it because it helps with the counting. I don't necessarily need it, but I find it helpful if I'm starting to like travel farther away from the rest of my stitching. So those are my thoughts on that. Sorry if that was just a big babbling <laughs> mess. Hopefully that'll help other people too, in addition to who actually asked the question. So, okay. So the next part will be whips. Um, I worked on five projects again this week and I have been taking notes in my little cheap planner here. Uh, so the first thing I worked on on Sunday and Monday was my video game sampler, which looks like this. It's designed by Screaming Heart Design and they have an Etsy shop and also a Facebook page. Um, this design in particular is a donation. So you have to find the post on their Facebook page and then make a donation. And then once you send them proof, they'll give you the pattern. Um, so it's whatever you think is fair. So yeah, this is the first one. I am stitching this on 18 count Barnwood Ada. That's the color, Barnwood. Um, two over one full crosses. And this is where we got to from last time. I really, really like it. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. This one, it's it's just really simple and relaxing. So I really like working on it. Um, so I think from last time I had all of this, most of these blocks and everything above that. So I finished off the last two blocks did this whole planter with, I think my boyfriend said it was a piranha flower from Mario. And then I did these blue, blue designs here. So between those two days, I got about, let's see if I can do it in my head, 886 stitches, which was a lot more than I was planning to work on this, but it's nice to get a lot of progress. And I actually, this is one of the ones I'd like to finish for this year. And I did the math with where I am and where I would need to be to finish it. And it looks like I need to do about 33, equivalent of 33 stitches a day or about like 232 stitches a week. So I'm probably going to slow down a little bit on this just to keep with that schedule because they are, the blocks are relaxing, but also with, because I have a lot of complicated projects. So I find it a little bit boring after a while. So I like that I actually have like a set goal each week now. So that's the first one. Still love it. It's super fun and it makes me laugh every time I look at it. So that was the first project I worked on. Second thing I worked on was Middle Earth Map, which looks like this. It's a design from Tilton Crafts. And I am stitching mine on 28 count, easy count, yeah, 28 count, easy count, two over one tit stitch. I have never been so excited to see a letter <laughs> on any of my projects. So this is where we got to from last time. And there's an R. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I did, let's see. 823 stitches between those two days. I find it interesting because this is where the confetti comes in on this one. If you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there's a ton of like maroons and browns and even a little bit of black in there. So it actually slowed me down quite a bit when I started working on that, but I got a bunch more of the, the light orange and stuff filled in. I am showing this the wrong way. <laughs> I was like, that looks weird. Why does that look weird? This is the right way. I'm gonna wait to do the side by side till I flip it. <laughs> yep, 
so this is where I was working was in there's actually like a lighter yellow that's coming in now so just some of that orange and yellow and then I just couldn't stand it I was like I have to do something else so I did the R it's not quite done yet but most of it's in there now really love that makes me excited to get to more of the details hopefully soon <laughs> seems like it takes me a while to get to anything but so that is the second thing I worked on then the third thing I worked on Wednesday, no, sorry, Thursday. Yeah, Middle Earth was Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I switched to my Twisted Band Sampler, which looks like this, on Thursday and Friday. It's a pattern by Northern Expressions Needlework. And I am doing mine on just a plain white 32 count Lugana 2 over 2. Sorry, I did not have these set up very well. You know what? That's fine. I'll have inserted the picture by now. <laughs> okay, so my goal on this one during March was to finish the specialty band, and I did. I am in love with this. I did not expect to like the specialty bands as much as I do, but they are so much fun. So we did see if I can remember. <laughs> okay, so this first band and the last band were diagonal herringbone stitches. Then the second in and second to the last here were Smyrna crosses. And the two in the middle were circle eyelets, I think is what they're called. So I think the second day I worked on this, I only used about half my time to finish off. I had gotten through the first of the dark the dark color band and then I finished the last two the next day but I absolutely love it it is a lot of fun to try something different it's a little bit confusing when you first start but as you go you're like oh, okay I got this <laughs> so did quite a bit on that one this is one of these ones that I don't count stitches because it's on paper but there's definitely a lot of stitches in there so Excited to get that done. So I am done with this one for March. Um, April will be the next cross stitching band and it's, let's see. It will be this band of, oops, sorry, glare. This will be the band of butterflies there. That'll be what I'll do in April. So I'm trying to spread this one out. I wanted to keep working on it so bad, but I was like, I need to work on other stuff too. So that'll be the next one. But if anybody's thinking of starting this one, highly, highly recommend. I love it. And I'm not usually like a pink person either, but I love how it looks. So that was whip number three. And then later in the evening on Thursday, I started working on Paris and My Dreams, which looks like this. Another Heaven and Earth Designs chart by Leonid Afromov. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. Um, my version is just the regular one. Someone asked if I got the max color. I did not. This is just a regular color version. I have one max color on the cone. I was like, I don't think I can do more than one at a time. So, so I am stitching mine on 25 count, uh, the DMC Magic Guide two over one ten stitch and here's where we got from last time not too much to see yet still just splotches of color but got to work there's I don't know if you can tell it doesn't really show up there's some blues and purples like really dark blue and purples in there and I started a lot of this red there's a lot of 814 in this that maroon color it's been a lot of fun to work on but yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't look like anything yet. So I got, so I worked on this Friday evening and then I think I said Thursday, I meant Friday. Friday evening and then this morning I worked on this for, let's see, 600, I think 600 stitches, 610 stitches. 
there's that one. I'll be really happy when I get into new colors and it starts to look like something. What's nice about this one is there is black, but it's mostly confined to like the the corners where it's the darkest. Um, but as you keep moving, then the darker colors become just like shades of actual color, not black. So excited to get a little bit farther on that. So that is number four. And then the last thing I worked on was Pandemic, which looks like this, which is designed by Long Dog Samplers. I am stitching mine 28 count on 28 count Lugana in the color Helix by Picture This Plus. One over one full crosses. And what was really fun about this one is I actually stitched this in um, my local needle workshop because I met up with someone for like a stitchy, stitchy day. So that was really fun. One of my subscribers reached out to me and they were local. We decided to hang out and stitch for a while. So that was really fun. We got to browse through the shop and stuff and talk about a bunch of stitchy things. <laughs> so, but here is my progress that I got. I actually continued to work on this one once I got home. And I ended up with just shy of 700, 694 stitches. So I get burnt out with the 939 really quickly on this one. This is the other one that's slated to be a finish this year. And I figured out the math on this one. I would need about 1,050 stitches a week to, to be done by the end of the year, which is a lot more than I originally thought it would be. Um, and I'm only getting, I think right now, I'm only been averaging about six to 700 stitches a week. So I need to ramp that up quite a bit. I figured if I work twice a week on it for about 525 stitches, I should make it, which is not a lot. I think I can get that much in about three, not even three, like two hours if I just sit down and go. Cause this is really easy to get quick stitches on. So I finished off this motif. I got this little squirrely in and then I just brought all of these lines down. And then I think I brought this down a little bit too. So still love how that's coming out. I really should take it out. I'm, I will take the whole thing out and show you guys the whole way across once I finish this page. But I'm still, as you can see, <laughs> I have quite a ways left to go. And I'm actually starting into this, which is very stitch heavy and the strips that come down right here. So it's going to take me a minute to get to the end of this page. But that is my last whip for this week. I'm really happy with my progress. Um, I did not add up all of my progress, so I'm not sure where I got to, but if I'm doing a quick add up, I think I managed probably somewhere over 2,000, maybe upwards of 3,000 stitches, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> so that is all of my whips for this week, and then I have a teeny tiny bit of haul um, while I was at the, the needle workshop with my new stitchy friend. <laughs> Uh, I ended up getting some more stuff for my Mirabilia and I got, so I got a new pair of scissors. These were recommended to me. I don't know if they're any good, but I've heard they're really sharp and mine are like super dull. So I need a new pair. I got those and then, so I got the three beads that I need for my Mirabilia. So there's these gold ones. These pretty gold ones and these ones, I think these are both the same shade, but one's big and one's small. So these are the little ones and these are the bigger ones. So they're like a pretty, like almost rainbow. No, they're like a bluish purple. I don't know. They're interesting, but yep. So I got those two. I got all my beads and then unfortunately they didn't have both of the Krynix I needed. They just had this one, which is, I don't know. I feel like a real floss tuber, guys. <laughs> Having to put my, I don't know. Is it because it's in my face? I don't know. It's fine. So I got this color, which is like a shiny silver. These are just the Krynix number four braids. This is 001 HL. Not sure what that stands for. And then... I needed 0018 and they didn't have that. So they're ordering that one in. 
and I might end up going back there to get some fabric at some point because they had some really pretty choices so but yeah so that is everything for this week guys <laughs> as I said probably just rambled really fast through that so didn't end up being too long but um if you guys want to leave me a comment like subscribe email me find me on instagram all that information is down below and i would be happy to have anybody join me on my cross stitching journey um i am here every week so i'm gonna leave it there i hope everybody is doing well and staying safe and healthy and i will see you next time bye guys